Almighty God has caused the Old Testament to foreshadow the history of the Catholic Church, event for event and in the same chronological order. However, the depth and scope of God's masterpiece is even greater still. Not only did the Lord cause the Old Testament to prefigure Catholic Church history, but also the earthly life of Christ in the Gospels. In a dazzling act of God, it seems that the earthly life of Christ recorded in the Gospels also foreshadows or prefigures the events in both the Old Testament and in Church history, all three occurring in chronological order from the beginning to the end. Out of these parallels come beautiful wonders, clarity of vision, and a complete confirmation and vindication of the Catholic Church. Our Lord is the light of the world. The Gospels, which depict the earthly life of our Lord, have resonances with both the Old Testament and Church history. The Gospel stories, just like natural light, seem to have a certain spectrum of Old Testament colors, which align with the chronological parallels between the Old Testament and Church history. These ranges of prefigurement can be seen to coincide with a certain range of Old Testament or Church history. Taken as a whole, and in view of the big picture, the life of Christ mirrors the history of Israel in the Old Testament and the history of the Catholic Church, in the same chronological order and with amazing detail and beauty. Let's look at our Lord's words to Nathaniel and our Lord's discussion with Nicodemus. These stories are taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapters 1 and 3, and how they prefigure the conversion of St. Augustine. Here are the passages from the Gospel of St. John. On the following day, he would go forth into Galilee, and he findeth Philip. And Jesus said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus the son of Joseph of Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything of good come from Nazareth? Philip saith to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and he saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. Nathanael saith to him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered him and said, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I say unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, thou believest? Greater things than these shalt thou see. And he saith to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, You shall see the heavens opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art come a teacher from God, for no man can do the things that thou dost unless God be with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen, I say unto thee, Unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I say to thee, unless a man be born again of water and the Holy Ghost, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Wonder not that I said to thee, you must be born again. The Spirit breatheth where it will, and thou hearest his voice, but thou knowest not whence he cometh, and whither he goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be done? Jesus answered and said to him, Art thou a master in Israel, and knowest not these things? Amen, amen, I say to thee, that we speak what we know, and we testify what we have seen, and ye receive not our testimony. If I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you believe not, how will you believe if I shall speak to you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended into heaven, but he that descended from heaven, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, 
that whosoever believeth in him may not perish, but may have life everlasting. Now let's briefly examine some selected quotes from the great work by St. Augustine, Confessions. In the first passage, St. Augustine is lamenting that two uneducated men have been born again from above and have given themselves entirely to Jesus Christ and his church, while he, St. Augustine, still wants to fulfill the desires of his flesh and live for this world. The second passage is the account in which St. Augustine gives to describe his famous conversion under a fig tree. Then, in this great contention of my inward dwelling, which I had strongly raised against my soul, in the chamber of my heart, troubled in mind and continence, I turned upon Olypius. What ails us? I exclaim. What is it? What hurtest thou? The unlearned start up and take heaven by force, and we with our learning, and without heart, too, where we wallow in flesh and blood. I cast myself down, I know not how, under a certain fig tree, giving full vent to my tears, and the floods of mine eyes gushed out an acceptable sacrifice to thee. And not indeed in these words, yet to this purpose, spake I much unto thee. And thou, O Lord, how long, how long, Lord, wilt thou be angry forever? Remember not our former iniquities, for I felt that I was held by them. I sent up these sorrowful words, how long, how long, tomorrow, and tomorrow? Why not now? Why not is there this hour an end to my uncleanness? So was I speaking and weeping in the most bitter contrition of my heart, when, lo, I heard from a neighboring house a voice, as of a boy or a girl I know not, chanting and oft repeating, Take up and read, take up and read. Instantly my countenance altered. I began to think most intently whether children were wont in any kind of play to sing such words, nor could I remember ever to have heard the like. So checking the torrent of my tears, I arose, interpreting it to be no other than a command from God to open the book, and read the first chapter I should find. For I heard of Antony, that coming in during the reading of the gospel, had received the admonition, as if what was being read was spoken to him. Go and sell all that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. And by such an oracle he was forthwith converted unto thee. Eagerly then I returned to the place where Lippius was sitting, for there had I laid the volume of the apostle when I arose thence. I seized, opened, and in silence read the section on which my eyes fell first. Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh in concupiscence. No further would I read, nor needed I, for instantly at the end of the sentence, by a light as it were of serenity infused into my heart, all the darkness of doubt vanished away. Then putting my finger between, or some other mark, I shut the volume, and with a calmed countenance made it known to Olypius. And what was wrought in him, which I knew not, he thus showed me. He asked to see what I read. I showed him, and he looked even further than I had read, and I knew not what followed. This followed. Him that is weak in the faith, receive, which he applied to himself, and disclosed to me. And by this admonition he was strengthened, and by a good resolution of purpose, the most corresponding to his character, wherein he did always very far differ from me, for the better, without any turbulent delay, he joined me. Now that we have recounted the calling of Nathaniel in our Lord's discussion with Nicodemus, from the Gospel of St. John, and recounted the words of St. Augustine pertaining to his conversion, we are ready to see the amazing parallels between them. Keep in mind that these accounts both occur at the same respective point in their chronological timelines. Our Lord called St. Philip to follow him. St. Philip went and found his friend Nathaniel. Based on the Gospel story, it appears that both of them were searching and waiting for the Messiah. St. Augustine and his friend Olypius were both searching for the truth. They experimented with various religions and philosophies. When St. Augustine was given grace to convert under the fig tree, 
he immediately told his friend Alypius, who joined him in his conversion as well. Our Lord said he saw Nathanael under the fig tree. Our Lord said that Nathanael was a true Israelite in which there was no guile. Guile is defined as sly or cunning intelligence. St. Augustine was filled with guile, as was evidenced by his cunning and sly use of his great intelligence before his conversion. However, when he was converted under the fig tree, he was given a pure and simple heart, and his guile was removed. When our Lord told Nathanael that he saw him under the fig tree, Nathanael instantly, and with great certitude, confessed that Jesus was the Son of God and the King of Israel. After St. Augustine heard the voice say, Take and read, and after he read the passage from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, he was filled with instant and certain recognition of the truth of the Catholic faith. He had no further need of any other evidence. Nicodemus was a Pharisee and held a position of great public importance. He was intrigued with the teachings of our Lord, but he chose to come to our Lord at night, presumably to keep his interest hidden from others. St. Augustine was a rhetorician and orator for the Roman Empress. He was enjoined to be publicly opposed to St. Ambrose, although interiorly he was intrigued and even convinced that St. Ambrose was speaking the truths of God. Our Lord told Nicodemus that one must be born again of the Spirit to enter the kingdom of God. Before his conversion, St. Augustine lived for his passions and earthly pleasure. He became convinced intellectually about the truths of the Catholic faith, but he didn't want to give up his passions. Under the fig tree, he was given a great grace and was given a rebirth of his heart. He then went to be baptized by St. Ambrose and was born again both of water and the Holy Ghost. Nicodemus clumsily asked if our Lord meant that we had to physically re-enter our mother's wombs in order to be born again. St. Monica was fervently praying for the rebirth and conversion of her son, St. Augustine. St. Augustine resisted his mother and didn't want anything to do with her piety or prayers. However, it was because of her prayers, most certainly, in which St. Augustine was given the grace of his conversion. Our Lord told Nicodemus, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Wonder not that I say to thee, you must be born again. St. Augustine opened the letter of St. Paul to the Romans and was converted by this passage. Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering or wantonness, not in strife and envying, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in concupiscence. St. Augustine thus realized, by God's grace, that he was to abandon the flesh and be born of the Spirit. Our Lord reproved Nicodemus when he said, Art thou a master in Israel, and knowest not these things? Nicodemus was a teacher in Israel, but he did not understand this simple teaching. Just before his conversion under the fig tree, St. Augustine lamented that uneducated men were understanding the truths of the Catholic faith and were changing their lives, when he himself was not able to understand how he was to change his life. However, once he was converted and baptized, St. Augustine became one of the greatest teachers in Catholic Church history.